wouldn't you think that bird's gonna look good in there as a shifter? It has a story to tell. It's karma, it's meant to be. The truck is hokey and all rusty. This is hokey and all Just enough garage today 74 Ford we're doing something special okay so last week if you remember we did this vice I saw on the video Mary made fun of me for my right rain cover all right fine whatever and I also said I would give you guys an update let me give you an update here on the Jeep tires flat flat let's see if we can get them in here flat they're all flat but we don't care about that I'm not using it today I wanted to show you this you've seen it in the video on the Jeep this is my wrench it's an oddball imperial styled wrench um, it has a good shape to it for shifting a little bit sharp on the edges I made that a while ago when I put on there okay let's follow the theme what else do I got to show you come through my maze my shop Rat rod, you guys remember the rat rod? Okay, rat rod. There's videos on all these vehicles. What do I got here? It's dark, but it's got its own homemade shifter handle. Also, it's got a license plates for a ceiling. It's got all kinds of junk on the floor. Really cool, we'll get it back out in the spring. Well, it's practically spring. But it's, you know, anyways. Let's go out here to this one real quick. So the video is about the 74 Ford. 74 Ford F350. I did a whole will it start, will it run thing on this. It has sat here for over a month. We went to California. We've gone on Jeep rides. We did stuff. Let me show you what I'm doing today on it. It's rusty. Holes are in the floor. Like I said, you guys have seen this before. What you hadn't seen was the birds have moved in. And I'm making little houses in here and I've chased them out. And I stumbled on an idea that involves this right here. Let me show you. Okay, remember that. We're going to need to know that in a minute. Let's come here. Oh, look who came out. Hi, Rolly. How are you, bud? Yeah? So, on the table, I have this cast iron bird. Now, if you hold the bird just like this, you guys can see where I'm going with this. Okay, so I just got to be able to do this to this and this is going to involve that vice which is why i did that one first and it's going to involve these tools on the table okay so let me get set up here yeah i don't know if you can see me or not so in order to figure out what the threads these are a couple of ways of doing it i could just jam bolts in there until i figure it out i could measure it with my indicator and then I have this tool. This is a thread counter, okay? Um, hopefully you guys can see this. I'm filming by myself today. But each one of these has a different thread. So you can see the numbers on those, hopefully. And so what we're gonna talk about, real quick, this is the learning moment. This is the I think I know a few things too moment. Um, so you have threads per inch, okay? So if it's a 3 8 by 16, what does that mean? 3 8 is the diameter, 16 is the threads per inch. So if you had one inch out on the, on the thing, you could count each thread, one, two, three, four, and you'd get 16 threads per inch. So that would be a coarse fret, thread. Fine thread is gonna be 24 threads per inch. Now, this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you something and then we're gonna do it, practical. Somebody said in one of the quotes that I had something to add and I'm going to try and teach you. So sometimes I do things, but today I'll show you. This is going to be kind of a quick video, trying to make uh, a little bit shorter so more people will watch them. For those of you who subscribed last week, thank you, thank you. For those of you who have been watching the whole time, thank you, thank you. Let me, uh, let me bring the camera back around here. Okay, so we're going to take our thread because I've done some pre-production. Well, you pre-production? 
pre looking at, pre experience. I'm trying to do this and hold the camera so you know. Okay, so if I was to measure the diameter of the what I'm trying to get, okay, now hopefully the camera will pick this up. Oh, I bumped it. Okay, I want to be able to get the diameter of that. Okay. Uh, I don't know that you guys would be able to see this. Let me explain how this works. This is a six inch slide. And you can see right here on these numbers, we are, let me put on my glasses so I can see too. Okay. We can see right here that it is three, but not quite to four. Then we go to the dial and you can see that it's just below the seven. Three eighths is three seven five. Okay, so that is uh, three eighths of a diameter. So if I put it on there, I get it going. There it goes. See there, three seven five. Now we look at our threads. That's this fine end. This is the coarse end. So I put that on there, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try to position this so you guys can see what I'm seeing. I'll put that on there see that one don't fit with a hoot I turn it around to 24 and you see how that well I don't have any more hands to zoom it but it's the 24 so I have 3 8 by 24 okay moving on Rolly still here all right 3 8 by 24 the sun's kind of out tonight. Well, this afternoon. Three eighths by twenty-four. These are taps I already owned. Uh, where's that showing? Yeah, that'll be all right. Three eighths by sixteen. Three eighths by sixteen. It's written on there. And then I got a bunch of five sixteenths and some other stuff, and I got drill bits five thirty-two. Because in pre-production. Oh, I was going to show you, I also have a dial indicator that's plastic. You can get those cheap. This one was a little more. This is the difference between a tap and a die. We're dealing with taps today. This is a die, uh, and it would do those threads there, or thread chaser, some people call them. Uh, and again, you have to have it right. So what we're doing is in order to make those threads, we've got to drill a hole that is under the size we need, and then the tap will come in and cut those threads. Let me give you an example. This is a starter tap, essentially. It starts with this taper, very fine thread, and then it gets into the heavier coarse. And then you've got your tap handle that will go on there. Uh, I had another one. Oh, it's in the toolbox. We'll get it out in a minute. So here they're matched. I went to the store. Uh, I think this was like seven bucks, and this was like 12. The drill was actually more money that surprised me. This is a hardened tool steel. This one you'll see right here is 3 8 by 24, which is what I just determined that is. And it says use with Q bit. This is a letter Q, which is a 33.3311. And what did we have here? Anybody remember? We had a 30, uh, we had 30,750. So this is going to be under by about 40 thousandths. That's where the threads come in. If I do this right, I should be able to grind this guy flat. So that he's on his perch put a center punch i'll get a smaller drill i'm not going to start with that one and i'll step drill it out i'll start with a smaller drill and then i'll move up to a larger drill and eventually i'll run the tap in that and then because this thing is this is the irony this is the way my mind works so let's let's include my mind in this i think it's cool okay i see the similarity between a bird being caught in there we don't have the video anymore mary delivered uh, deleted it once during the will it start when I found the bird he was alive he was living in there he came up through the floor so anyways and it was about this size and then this was given to me the other day out of the random blue uh, I think the kids called it manifesting when stuff shows up that you need that you didn't know you needed my dad found this in a junk pile or something he had at the house it's broken off of a gate or or some kind of a bird feeder or something he goes here 
maybe you could use this. And I said, what would I ever use that for? And then all of a sudden I remembered that bird in there. And this looks just as, let me show you the truck. Wouldn't you think that bird's gonna look good in there as a shifter? It has a story to tell. It's karma, it's meant to be. The truck is hokey and all rusty. This is hokey and all rusty. And it fits, like I say, it fits really good in your hand. Now it's a little heavy. It's a little heavy and you might say, well, that's too heavy. It's gonna shift the gears for you. It might, well, you gotta learn to hold it or give it up. If it doesn't work out, what did I do? I wasted a few minutes buying a, dra a tap and a drill. And I made a YouTube video. So let's go over here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go use my bench grinder, flatten that out. And I think I'll get back with you. You guys have seen a bench grinder turn before. You don't need to watch that. I'm not showing you. Okay, so tape measure from the end of this to six inches. I'm gonna explain this a little bit. I'm gonna explain this a little better because I don't know that I did. Six inches, that's what this can, this can do. As you, as you roll it out, you will see right here. I don't want to get close enough you can see. There's one, there's two, there's three. So if I was exactly here on the one and that was on zero, I would be exactly one inch. Is that, where's the dang, so you guys see that? One inch. So what I was talking about earlier, like say, I'm gonna measure this. What is the diameter of this? I would measure it like so. You see right there? There's the two, and I'm at 50,000, so that's a quarter inch, right? So, there's this, there, there's this going back and forth between decimals and fractions all the time. Uh, so if you were to hold that exactly there, you'd see that's right on the quarter inch as well. And I could also do the inside. So if I wanted to measure the inside of this, oh, there's a stop on the top so you don't lose it. You'd put that in there and then I could measure that. Okay, what do I got? When I was saying earlier about three, three inch and thirty thousandths, okay, right here. I don't know if you can read that. Point three three eleven. So right there, three. Well, we're at thirty one basically, because there would be thirty five. So you'd be thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. Anyways, what I have here should work. I've got this ground up nicely. Hopefully that's going to do well. We'll center punch it. Let me set up the other camera. We're going to use our vise exactly for this, and we'll get rolling on it. And you'll see success here in a moment. All right, let's take the rain cover off. Mary's right. There was a hole there. I didn't see it in my rush. It was after filming. I didn't grind the edges. It's still sharp. So let's get rid of the roof. Now you can see in the jaws, hopefully you can see in the jaws. Eh, I'm gonna adjust you guys a little. Okay, in the jaws. These are steel jaws, nothing overly special. So I got to move it in the house. I can already see it's getting rusty. The roof didn't work. I got this towel. Don't tell me this is just enough garage. I stole it from the house, but for a reason. I don't wanna put a bunch of Mars in the side of the bird from the vice jaws. So we'll put him in here. And then I can tighten him. Oh yeah. Give me a center punch. Now I'm gonna try to center him right there. I'm using an eyeball. That should be enough. So I got a lot of good comments last week about the um, about the steel welding to it. I had mentioned in there about nickel rod. Uh, my dad so had sold uh, welding supplies for a number of years. He says stainless would something with stainless would do it too. So I've got a plan to go back weld some stuff to that. Um, Weld some stuff to that with nickel rod and a stainless rod. I don't have a stainless rod here. I have to dig out my stick welding machines. It's down the road. I'm gonna bolt it to that tire and we're gonna drag it around on a gravel road somewhere and see if we can break it because we know that the steel didn't work on that cast. Here's a way to do it. 
Obviously, I needed to preheat it as well, which, you know, anyways, let's do this. So I start with this little drill bit. Now, hopefully you can tell by the chips coming off of there. Can you guys see those at all? So hey, this is hard to do without somebody helping me film, and I don't have anybody help me film. Let me push on that. We can get the, we can do this. Stand by. All right, action. Yeah. Anyways, you can see that it's a cast. I know this one's cast. Backyard machining right here. Here we go. Ideally, I'd want that to be so when it's on the stand in there, it doesn't look stupid. I'll have to shake this towel out before it goes in my washing machine. You guys know how that costs money. Now you can see I drilled more probably than I need for what I have in there, but that gives me a chance not to have it bottom out before I'm ready. And you notice there was a jam nut on the bottom of that that I could thread up to touch the bottom. I'm gonna say that's probably doing it. I'd hate to come through the back of him. So now, we take our brand new drill bit, our $12.98 drill bit now this is important don't try to don't try to wheel and deal your way into this take your time get the right drill bit that's the right setup if you try to use a drill bit that's the wrong for sizing it the threads won't work when you drill these in you want to make sure that you're not wobbling it out Kind of straight and true. Slow and easy. The bigger the drill bit, the slower you go. Okay, it feels like I hit bottom. Now, let me, uh, I don't know, this will show on camera. I, like I said, I don't have a zoomer with me. Let me bang him out. I don't know, can you guys see in there? Well, if you could see in there. You'll see that it's pretty close to the bottom. Close enough that I'm going to leave it. I'm going to get set up for the tap now. But there's one thing I want to do, and I'm going to go find me a countersink and show you what, what's going on here, and I'll get my tea handle. I'll be back. Hold on. Well, I have a real countersink somewhere. I, I don't want to look for it. I'm lazy. So you take a drill like this. It's a little bigger. Bada-bing, bada-boom, countersunk. We'll move on with life. Okay. Now this is our big chance to shine. I don't know, zooming it in there, if that, I don't know if that's helping you guys or not. Maybe you don't even care. We did some calculating, and a lot of people that are my friends are watching the videos. And if you're a new subscriber, I got 627, 26, 29 subscribers. Thank you, thank you very much. We're trying to get to 1,000. We're trying to get people interested in what we're doing. It's going to obviously generate more. Good things come from good things, right? Let me get this open. Okay. This is a handle. You can just see how that works. That will insert into there. 
I guess you could put it that way. And that just bites it. Now the thing to remember is you want that to kind of go in straight and true. But there's only so much you can do with that when we're doing it in the backyard. So it's not a continuous operation. You get it started, and because this is brand new, it's going to be sharp and it should work well. We use the right drill, but you get it started. And about every one turn, you turn back a little bit. That breaks the chip off, which was part of the reason for over drilling the bottom, because now those chips have a place to go. This is a hardened material, a tool steel. It can break. They do break. So you just work it like this. And it's tapered, so it's going to cut deeper as it goes. Anybody can do this. Don't be afraid of, you know, Google it. You can Google what size to match if the store doesn't have it. On this case, um, it called for them, but I already looked. Just look online, Google uh, either the decimal to fraction conversion, or you can Google uh, the tap size and what drill is needed and it'll call out it's only one size so don't say oh that's close enough it'll work uh, that's not recommended these are engineered to work as a team so we get that going I'm doing a quick video today um, this is a Sunday afternoon I'm working a shift that's quite involved right now six days a week um, so it's about over it's just my busy time of the year we're going to dig out all the junk again. We're going to do some things. The 53 Ford has sat on that trailer since God knows when, January. The Suburban hasn't been out since we did the carburetor upgrade. This green Ford we're working on today hasn't started since before the California trip, which was several weeks ago. Um, that white Subaru you keep seeing in the background, I need to do an engine swap on it. I bought the whole project because I had an engine for it, which I haven't done. Um, update on the Jeep tires. Yeah, I'm going to look for some different tires. Those are just, you know, I'm going to have to dismount them the whole entire way. I, I have my own homemade dismounting tool over there. I'll show you that someday if you're interested. Uh, the way this works, if you guys are still watching me <laughs> tap a hole, is uh, if you give suggestions, I'll try to do them. If you interact with me through the comment sections or the thumbs up, that really helps the algorithm. It lets YouTube know that my stuff is interesting and, and it will forward that. It'll basically make me known. I'm a very small channel doing very small things. I'm hoping to become a, a larger channel doing cool things, but you know, that takes time and money. Um, I've discovered that most people who watch this are about my age group. So we're all on the same page. You guys have all raised families. You all know what it costs to live in America. You know how much fun projects can be. You know how much work they are. For some reason, I've decided to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven projects that you can see in this film right now. And down in the driveway, my brat. My brat, my beautiful 86 Subaru brat is having trouble with an oil leak. So I think I might show that next week. Introduce some people to the brat. But more importantly, fix an oil leak on a 40-year-old car. Um... And then on the Suburban behind you, it runs and drives. I got some wiring issues. They're boring. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to get to that wiring. I'd love to take that somewhere. I was talking to a friend of mine who has this really cool 57 Chevy. I said, we should get those out in the summer here. The 64 Suburban, the 57 Chevy, and go on a road trip in our local area, show you some scenery. Just take them for a cruise. You know, we're not part of any clubs or nothing. We're just guys. That work a lot he works a lot i work a lot okay i feel like it's down to the bottom i'm going to unthread it and we'll see what we got once it's threaded it's threaded you're done now you see how you see how deep the, I, this is deeper than i'll need let me get this over to here okay shake out the the dust give it a little blow shake out the towel don't tell just enough garage misses that we used your towel you can see the threads in there hope you can see the threads in there turned out pretty good 
Let's put you on pause, set you up in the truck, see if it actually fits. Okay, you guys can see all the bird poops in here. I can't get mad at the bird. I'm sure he was upset about the whole situation too. He came in through that hole. This has been on the this has been an ongoing thing, this project. I put it on stall because I don't have the title yet. The fella's looking. It's a it's nothing to do with anybody but time management and everyone's thing. Don't be afraid of projects. Um I was gonna tell you guys real quick before I see if that even fits. Tools. Get yourself some tools. If you don't want to go buy new tools and you don't want to get Walmart tools, look at yard sales, garage sales. Sometimes you can get a pretty good set of tools or piece them together. Um, you know, I try to buy the Craftsman wrenches when I can find them for about a dollar. If I can get away with a dollar, that's what I buy. So this has a jam nut, as I said earlier, so we can adjust this. Let me come around this other way because the dang camera's in the way now. Okay. Get my seat out of the way. I didn't put any oil on it. It's cast iron. Let's just see what happens. Oh, that's a good sign when they thread on that easy. Okay, so now you see how that's going the wrong way for me. And that jam nut, so I gotta put it that way. And this is where I'll bring the jam nut. Oh, get in here. This is where I'll bring the jam nut up to it. And that's gonna lock it in. Alright, move over, hearse. We got us a T handle. Let's see if this thing will roll away. Okay, look at that. It doesn't hit the dash. There's a gear. <laughs> now, some of you, <laughs> some of you are probably thinking that's stupid. Yeah, you get it now. It doesn't matter. It's my project. I think it's cute. I think it's funny. I think it was meant to be. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm gonna turn it just a little. But the point is, is I can do what I want. And to me, that belongs there. Now, let's. You know what? I haven't started this truck since, like I said, before the California trip. Hey, Mariana put a link in here for the California trip, the Jeep trip, and last week's video comes up automatically. Pump it twice, and let's see what happens. I could embarrass myself in three, two, one. What are you gonna say, man? It's built Ford tough. Oh, yeah, put this link in there, Mary. These guys want to see this. All right, so the next thing we need to do with this old truck is got a little tappy tap in the valve cover. I'm done for today. I got to work in the morning. Well, this is a view. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this video. You can see that, it, oh, yeah, she fits nice. And it fits your hand nice, which is the thing. If you're going to make a... If you're gonna make a stupid shift handle, make it fit well. I've seen those guys that use the beer taps, the big tall ones and stuff, and those sometimes don't work out. In fact, I don't think I really showed you in the shop very good. I'm gonna show you another clip at the end in case Mary doesn't use the beginning. I'll turn some lights on so you can see it. Uh, take a look. Let me do that real quick. Well, put the light down. It's dark in the shop even though the lights are on. You know, that's why I like working outside in the natural light. This one fits good. You can see I've had it on here for years. What I did on this one, I don't know if you can see, but I actually just welded a steel nut, a couple of nuts to it, and I threaded this one on to this guy here. I think that other transmission, because this one's a T18, and it has reverse up over this way, where well, that one has it down over there, so I'm thinking that it must be, this is the 18, the other one must be the, New process, 435. Now let's go over here to this rat rod. It's just full of trash, man. Someday I'd love to have a shop that is a storage shop and a working shop. Oh, Mopar, yay. That's a classic sticker. But anyways, this one here, you can see I've used the, uh, that was off of a, like a gazebo. A guy gave me a bunch of scrap metal one day and I saved those up front here. I had two of them on the front, 
This one got broke off by somebody's ankle. It, it just rides there now. And then on the back, I have some as well. I don't know if this one will start. And I'm not going to dig it out. So remind me next time. There is a battery in it. I can't get in there, though, because there's too much trash. It'll take me a half an hour. Anyways, let's... uh. Hold on a second. Nah, there's too much stuff in the way. You guys have to wait and see a rat rod video later. We'll, we'll do her again. We'll take it on a trip. So, next week's video. Let's talk about it. I got choices for you. Please vote. Put in your comment. You want, me, you want to see why this one has a rod knock? We can do that. I'll do my best. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be working on my brat fixing the oil leak on that. Otherwise, if you have another suggestion and what you want to see, give me a holler. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Just Enough Garage. Tell us your thoughts. Please like, comment, and subscribe. See you next week.